so if i missed anyone welcome everyone we're golden nuggets we are a bible study not a chat room we are a bible study with a church service format set in a chat room environment we're not a chat room we are a bible study and we love the lord and we ch when we do chat we're chatting about the things of god praise reports prayer requests a good word for the day and things of god amen and so welcome everyone amen day eight we're, for those who are doing the consecration fast this is day eight day eight we're already at day eight so we, i get excited because when you really focus on just doing what you need to do to keep steady in your fasting time does fly see when you look at the clock time slows down but when you just go about doing what you need to do during the fasting period when you just keep praying you keep praying and things of god you keep feeding your spirit before you know it time goes by much faster than here that's our that's our shirt uh don uh don this is our ministry shirt the mighty wars of christ they're on my if you want on the t-shirts the t-shirts are on our website faith whole help ministries number two dot org that's our website and if you want one of our t-shirts that's where you find t-shirts hoodies mugs uh, tote bags we got all our mighty warrior for christ paraphernalia to represent wherever we go because we are mighty warriors we're not just a social club we get together here we sit here praising god for a reason we're, ha we're iron sharpening iron so when we go out there in the world we're ready to do business we're ready we're ready to battle when we're doing when we're doing this and, and i'm blessed i'm not joking when we're doing battle with the devil we are out there fighting every day when you're using the word of god the sword of spirit the whole armor of god sound mind protection no that's what that's what it's all about that's what it's all about we're in battle every day so when we come here when we come here and and, and we come here and, and we're sharpening our, our tools our word of god our spirit and all the things we need to do to survive in this world then we know we got to be ready we got to be ready for battle because the devil doesn't take a break the devil doesn't take a break because he's a spirit spirits don't get tired spirits do not get tired we get tired in the flesh but when you stay connected in the spirit you don't get tired because as long as you stay connected through christ we can do all things through christ if we need strength he gives us strength if we need more more energy he gives us energy we can do nothing on our own our flesh is limited but through christ we're unlimited unlimited energy we keep on coming back we keep on we keep on praising we keep on dancing we keep on shouting people say don't you get tired hey as long as i'm praising i don't get tired now if you try to do it without <laughs> if you try to do it without him you be going <coughs> you be breathing heavy coughing because when you do it by yourself the body the body has only limited energy but through christ that's why sometimes when you get happy in the lord and you keep going and going and going and you say, how come I could do it that long? How could, I, how could I praise it long? I thought I would be tired. That's because when he, when the Holy Spirit gets jumped into you and you get happy, when you get happy, you don't get, you don't feel fatigued. That when you finish praising, you fall out. <laughs> when you finish praising, you fall out and go to sleep. But while you're praising, you don't feel fatigued because you're in the presence of the Lord. And you're in the presence of the Lord, you get joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And you get happy. You get shouting. You praised up. And you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then and then you go rest good and let the body rest. Amen. Amen. So I just want to share that with you. Praise God. Now it's getting warm. Now it's getting warm. <laughs> Praise God. See, I get, get happy in the spirit. I get warm. Praise God. Now, kingdom business today, since we're in day eight, day eight, Alvaro, welcome, welcome. Uh, day eight. Now we're almost uh, we're almost one third of the way through the fasting. I mean, we're doing thirty days. We're on day eight, so we're almost one third of the way through the fasting period. Now, if you've been tr staying true to the fast and doing the best you can, the first week is usually the most challenging. Oh, Dana, Dana said thirty-five. Dana, my Dana is my timing share. Uh, thirty-five, Dana. Amen. So now, when you that first week. That first week is usually the most challenging week because you're putting your flesh under submission of something you have not wanted, you've been doing for a long time that you need to get control over, amen? So when you're trying to, when you're trying to get strength, amen? Oh, thank, praise, praise God, I root, I root, amen. So when you're trying to get strength in the Lord, that first week, that first week is where the challenge comes. And and your, your body is trying to, trying to do what it was, what it, kept doing but now you're fasting on it you're fasting on that behavior you're fasting on foods you shouldn't be eating that first week is when your body's fighting you tooth and nail and while your body's fighting the devil's also trying to come into your mind and try to tell you 
no, no, you can't make this. You can't do that. That's too drastic. You can't make this. You can't make that. You can't do that. How are you going? How are you going to exist without that? And see, when you first cut it out, your body's going. Well, wait a minute. Where's my this? Where's my that? Because the flesh is talking. The flesh says, "Where's my? Where's my? Where's my food? Where's my sugar? Where's my TV? Where's my telephone? Where's my computer?" Because your flesh is craving what you normally do. If you're doing too much of it and you need to control it, now you're fasting on it and you're telling the flesh, no, this for the next 30 days, we're cutting back or we're cutting that out. Don't even ask me anymore. But for the first week, your body is going crazy trying to ask you, where is my, my thing that I'm trying to cut back on? And that's when the attack comes strongest because when your body's already fighting you, the devil just comes in and tries to tell you, you can't make it. You don't have strength to make it. You don't have the strength to make it. You don't have the discipline. You don't have this. You don't have that. The devil's a liar. Right now, let's say, say it with me right now. The devil is a liar. First thing we know, the devil is a liar because I can do all things through Christ. See, we have to answer the devil's lies with the word of God. The devil says you can't do it. And I say, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13, excuse me. Let, me. let me quote the word to you, devil. You think I can't make it, but I know I can make it because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that's, that's how we have to keep applying the word over attacks, over negative thoughts, over whatever comes in our mind that is negative. We answer it with the word of God. And I've said this many times, I've, many times. Uh, <laughs> oh, Don said, gave up on the news, watching the, the news in the, in the trial. Oh, yeah. See, television, do you remember in the in the 60s, they used the term, you remember the term boob tube? Uh, OG, OGs of my age, well, this I'm dating myself now. They used to call the television the boob tube, which means you would sit there and just watch it for hours, and it's hypnotic. And, and they did this. They did this study one day. They did this study one day where this little boy was uh, playing a video game uh, on television, and the camera was on him. Do you know he only moved his head for four hours? He played a video game for four hours. He only moved uh, only two times. He moved was to go to the restroom and come back. And so the term boob tube means if you watch too much TV, it is infectious. It, it, and, and next thing you know, hours have gone by. Our, next thing you know, I've been watching for hours. I've been watching for six hours. And you say, where did time go? Hey, Caleb, because the television is hypnotic. And so because you're taking someone else's visual and it gets hypnotic. That's why if you watch too much TV in a row, next thing you know, it's been four or five hours because your mind is is almost hypnotized by watching, 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 watching. And I gotta stop, I gotta stop, but you keep watching. I gotta stop, I keep watching. Just like I keep eating, I gotta stop eating, I keep eating. See, whatever, that's, that's why we have to fast and pray. We're trying to break a habit that is out of control. Nothing wrong with television, but when you can't turn it off, it's hypnotic. Nothing wrong with food, but when you can't stop eating, it's hypnotic. So what happens is you're trying to gain and, we, and that's why I asked you guys to do a self-evaluation because I, I, most people just fast and pray on food. But I said do a self-evaluation because some people don't have a problem with food. Some people have a problem with behavior. So that's why I said at the beginning of this fast, take whatever it is in your behavior, food, television, computer, phone, whatever it is, evaluate yourself and consider what is it in my life that I'm too involved in, that it just taking too much of my time. I, kn I know I need to cut back on this. And when you answer that question, you know what you need to fast on. Something in your life is taking too much of your time that you could be giving some of that time to God, but you're taking too much time on this or that. And that's, that's how you can figure out how to do it. Amen. Now, the scriptures today, the, in the kingdom business, kingdom business today is really just talking about uh, general different things. But I wanted to start with the fasting period because several people, several people have actually noticed. A person asked me last week, is it true that you get attacked more when you're fasting and praying? That one of the fellowship members asked this for week one, hey, Deborah St. Louis, is it true that you get more attacks when you're fasting and praying? What's the answer to that? Yes, attacks on your mind do get attacked more because the devil doesn't want you closer to the Lord. Remember, when you're fasting and praying, you're getting stronger in the spirit because you're spending more time with God. Your body's feeling better because you're disciplining the body. 
and your behavior is getting under control. So see, the devil doesn't want you to be a better person. The devil doesn't want you stronger in spirit. The devil doesn't want you closer to the Lord. So yes, you will get more attacks, more distractions, more, more things coming in your way, trying to keep you from your goal during the fast because the devil does not want you to be a better person at the end of this fast. But if you stay, you stay fast with it, you stay true to it, do the best you can. Remember, there is no such thing as perfect. Do the best you can. Because God sees, God sees your intent on doing the best you can. See, we can never be perfect. So get perfect out of your head. We can never be perfect. But we can always do the best we can. And as, all, as long as we're always doing the best we can, that's seeking perfection. We can always seek perfection, but we can never be perfection. Some people become workaholics because they, they think they can, they think they're trying to achieve perfection. We'll always be imperfect because we're in the flesh. Flesh can never be perfect. And that can be a stronghold because you keep working yourself day and night, driving yourself crazy, having ulcers, having over overworked yourself, exhaustion, because you're trying to reach something you cannot achieve. You cannot achieve perfection in the flesh, but we can seek perfection. And as long as you seek it, you do the best you can. And that's why that's why three three our uh, three scriptures today, our text, our text today. As a man thinks, so he is. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks, so he is. So what we're what we're guarding in these this fast, fasting and praying period, three things regarding our mind and our thoughts. As a man thinks, so he is. That's Proverbs 23, 7. So we gotta guard what are we thinking about during the fasting and praying. We should be thinking about God more than problems, more than fears, more than worries, more than panic attacks. We should be immersing ourselves more in God during the fasting and praying period. That's why we want to get closer to God. That's why every time you feel a craving, you don't give in the craving, you pray more. You read the Bible, you listen to sermons or fellowship, whatever it is, every time you feel the craving in the flesh, answer it with something of God. Whether scripture, prayer, worship, praise, whatever it is. But every single time you feel the urge in the flesh to do that thing you're fasting on, answer it with something of God. You're answering and telling the flesh, the spirit man is in control this month, completely controlled. control. We're not doing any of that, what we used to do, or cutting back on it drastically. So you gotta be able to feel it. Whatever you're doing has to be a sacrifice. It has to be a sacrififice. Amen. Hey, thank you, Caleb. Thank you. That's the, I'm, I've been trying to remind everybody. Don't forget to put your pictures up, and so I can get everybody in the in the directory. Amen. Praise God. Now, second scripture, Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat of its fruit. We got to be careful what we're speaking. Be careful what we speak. Eighteen twenty. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat of its fruit. We keep attracting what we speak. What are you what are you speaking the most? See, what we're thinking and what we're speaking should be on the same page, but sometimes they're not. And I've did I've done several lessons on this. Several le lessons on making sure your speaking should be a reflection of your thinking. But if your thinking is not right, your words are gonna be right. So we gotta make sure the things we think about all the time and speaking all the time are on the same page, especially when you're trying to reach a goal, especially when you're trying to stay true to the Lord. Amen. So that's why that's why we have to make sure we stay in that mode and that and that concept of being close to the Lord and being obedient. And obedient, obedient to the word. As long as you stay obedient to the word the best you can, that will keep you on track. Amen. And that's how we how we able to stay true to what we're going through in this form. Of course, and of course, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 6, our favorite one. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, and those who come to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. That's the third text. So we have three texts. Proverbs 23, 7, Proverbs 18, 21, and Hebrews 11, 6. Why? Because we must believe that he is. We must believe that God is who he is. Now, it, now that's our faith. Without faith, without faith, why are we doing any of this? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So as soon as you're doing the best you can, you're pleasing God. As soon as you seek his face, you're pleasing God. As soon as you're doing the best you can in this life to live in his will, 
and his way. You're pleasing God. See, some people get too convicted. You start blaming yourself because you're not perfect. Again, get perfect out of your head. We go make mistakes. And when you make a mistake, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I mean, I lied today, Lord. Lord, forgive me. I'm trying to do it right. Whatever it is, when, whatever it is, whenever you slip up in the flesh, don't convict yourself and say, God's going, oh, God's going to get me. No, no, just say, forgive me. So God knows, God sees that we're doing the best we can. And when we're doing the best we can and you make a mistake, don't condemn yourself. When you make a mistake, just say, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm trying to do this right. Lord, help me give, help me be stronger, Lord. Give me strength to not do that again. Give me strength, Lord, to be able to be stronger in that area. See, just pray. Don't convict yourself. If you make a mistake, ask Lord to forgive you and then pray for extra strength in that area. If there's, you know, like a, if there's, if there's something you know, if there's a weakness you know, if you're fasting and praying on something that you know is a real weakness and you put it on your list and you go, oh man, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? How are you going to do that? Through Christ? That's how you're going to do that. See, once you put something on your list that's going to be really hard, the first thing you say, the flesh says, yeah, but how are you going to do that? How can, how can we do that for 30 days? How can we live without that for 30 days? That's not the, that's not the spirit talking. That's the flesh talking. And you answer it, how are we going to do that? Through Christ. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can go 30 days, whatever I need, to go through Christ. So you have to answer, as a man thinks, as a man thinks, those thoughts capture them. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Capture every thought. Capture every thought that's not like God. So when you're fasting and praying, we're going to be inundated by thoughts trying to distract us. Thoughts to make us want to give up in the fasting period. Because sometimes if your mind gets too absorbed with the world, too absorbed with stress, most people, when they cannot make it through their fasting period, I guarantee most of the time it's a stress attack that stops the fasting. Because stress works against the peace of mind you should have in fasting. So when you stay immersed, and that's why I say you got to immerse yourself in the word, whether it's scriptures, prayers, praise, worship, whatever it is, when you're feeding the spirit every single day, that's helping you keep the distractions of the world out of your mind. Because see, stress is the number one enemy to achieving your goal in anything, not just fasting, any goal, anything you're working on, when you get stressed out, usually that stops you because your mind now turns from your goal to the stress. So that's why we gotta, that's why we pray for supernatural strength to be strong and keep our mind stayed, our mind stayed on him. See, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed, stayed on the Lord. Whose mind is stayed on the Lord because what? We trust him. Our mind is stayed on the Lord because we trust him. That's a challenge. That's not easy. That is not easy. Don't think that's easy because everything in this world is set to take our mind off the Lord. Let me say it again. Everything in this world is set to take our mind off the Lord. So we have to, we have to pray for supernatural strength to keep our mind stayed on the Lord. We have to commit. To, to read the Bible every day. We have to commit to make sure we stay focused and never never let go of God's unchanging hand. We have to commit. Amen? Amen, Don. See, see so we, we can go, you can go for years with no food. See, food food fasting is not hard. It's the liquid fast. See, you can go, you can live for, like you said, years with no food. Now, you got to be careful, though. You got to be careful because when you don't eat, as you know, you of course you lose a incredible amount of weight. But if you don't drink enough, you can only live about four days without water because your body is 70% water. So you'll dehydrate and die if you don't have water for four or five days. But with no food, you can go for years, months, as long as you got the discipline to do what you need to do. But we have to make sure, that's the, and that's the perfect example, you have to know what your limitations are. We have many examples of people who fasted for long periods of time. But that's them. See, you can never try to imitate someone else because that's a different body, a different mindset. You got to make sure what you're fasting and praying on and your goal, how long you do it, is based on what you can do, not someone else. Everybody's got a different body. Everybody's got a different mindset. And so we can never compare our goal with someone else. 
So we're setting a goal for what we need to control. And so as long as you keep whatever you're fasting and praying on true to yourself, that keeps you in a goal within what you can do. And then you pray for the strength to make it through that goal. Amen. And that's what, that's basically, this lesson today is really reviewing, and that's what Kingdom Business is. This is us sharing different things about what, since we're fasting now, this is day eight. And then uh, whatever else you want to stay focused on, that's what you're going to do. Hey, big head, big dreams. Welcome, welcome. Praise God. So that's why we focus on feeding the spirit every day. Feeding the spirit every day is what is the key to keeping our peace of mind, keeping our goals, keeping focus, because the world is about distractions. Amen. Uh, but praise God, but, but Don, no taste buds, food taste over. Wow. Amen. But, but Don, we, we, keep you, we keep you in prayer, brother Don. Keep you in, uh, keep you in prayer. Cause see, see, and, and, and you have the and you have the perfect example, brother Don, with that with that with that type of limitation, you're not panicking, you're seeking God more. See, that's that's a perfect example of when we're attacked in this world, in our body, or in the flesh. So many people go into panic mode, or they give up on God. They stop praying. They just accept the condition as God's gonna take me out of here. I'll go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop trying. No, when you're under attack. When you're under attack physically, you you praise more. You you he say, well, devil. I did I did a poem. I, I I think I shared it with you last year. It's a poem called "Pain Can't Steal My Praise." Pain can't steal my praise. And see, that's what the devil's trying to do. When he inflicts us, he hits our body. He attacks our body in, with different infirmities. He's trying to steal our praise. But see, even in the midst, I did a whole lesson. There's, there's blessings in your infirmity. There's, there's blessings, like I said, when I hurt my back and I, I recorded the prayer, God's healing our power, I was praying for my back. I had no idea over 2 million views were going to hit that prayer. All I did was I was recording a prayer for my back so I could listen to God's healing our power and think about healing because the pain in my back was so bad, I recorded God's healing our power so I could listen to it every day so I can think about healing, not think about the pain. I want to be able to think about the healing, not the pain. The pain is real. The pain you feel is real. But your mind, what's your mind going to do with the pain? Either you're going to put up with the pain, you're going to endure the pain, or you're going to give into the pain. See, the only way to make it through the pain is to keep keep your mind off the pain as much as you can. If you if you focus on the pain, the pain will increase. If you keep thinking about the pain, it's going to double up. But when you keep your mind off the pain, off the word, think, think praising like God, think about healing, pray for healing, listen to healing. The more you feel your mind, remember, feed the mind. It's a flesh in pain. We got to feed the mind. The mind is controlling how much you feel in the body. The pain is real. But your mind, when you hear mind over matter, your mind, how much focus are you giving that infirmity the way you feel? So that's how... You, you, feel, you, you feel your mind with things of God. You feel your mind with healing, healing thoughts, healing thoughts, healing thoughts. Even if you're hurting, feel your mind, healing thoughts, healing thoughts, healing thoughts. And that helps you, that helps you stay strong because every, and you got to live this. When you're dealing, I, I, I'm doing the same thing with my back and my knees. I'm doing the same thing. I'm not just, I'm just talking theory. I'm doing the same thing I'm preaching because I'm dealing with back and knee problems. And so every day I feel the pain, I have to make sure I keep listening to healing, keep feeding the spirit, feeding your mind with the healing because things are happening. Things are happening whether you know it or not. When you keep focusing on healing, things are happening because sometimes you actually feel better. You say, wow, I don't feel as bad today. Why? Because you focused on healing that day. The pain was still there, but the pain was less. And sometimes and down, down the road, you say, wow, I feel a whole lot better because I've been, I've been drenching myself with healing, healing prayers, healing thoughts, healing scriptures, things of God, praying, stillness. See, when you're trying to bring healing in your body, you got to work overtime with the word of God because you're trying to change something in the flesh. The, the, the victory takes place first in the spirit. So you got to, you got to flood your spirit to change something in the flesh. You got to flood the spirit. Because the healing takes place first in the spirit. If you don't heal your spirit, 
You cannot heal your mind. Let me say it again. If you can't, if you can't heal in your spirit, you can't heal your mind. If you can't heal your mind, you cannot heal the body. They got to be in one accord. You got to feed the spirit. Feed the spirit with the word of God. Feed the spirit with the word of God. Let that word of God come into your mind. The word of God is now controlling your mind. Now the mind is now controlling the pain. How do you, how do you think, how do you think people, when you see those people do those incredible feats of, of martial arts, where they're, they're walking on nails, or they're walking on, a, they're walking barefoot on hot coals, how do you think they're doing that? It's because they've trained their mind to say, the, 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 those hot those hot ashes aren't hot. Now, we know, we know hot ashes are hot, but if they've trained the mind, those ashes aren't hot, all of a sudden, they're walking on hot ashes because they just told the mind the ashes aren't hot. And when you get to a certain point, when you get to a certain point of, 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 of focus, your mind actually takes over and you don't feel what you think is the mind saying, but that's, that's gonna be hot. The mind says, that's not, that's not hot. Those ashes aren't hot. And so when you see people doing incredible feats in the physical realm, it's because their mind has been conditioned to understand how that was focused. And see, and, the, and the, the, the healing, right here, the different healing things going up right now. Amen. So, amen, Reverend Lisa. The healing scripture prayer, praise God. Praise God. And the healing testimonies, uh, Jonna and Valerie. And when we had the uh, uh, and, and healing, and, and see, these, what people don't understand, there's power in prayers. There's power in prayer. Don't get lazy with your prayers, especially if you're trying to change something in your body. If, when you're trying to, if you're trying to heal yourself, you're trying to change something in the flesh. But in order to change the flesh, again, you got to feed the spirit with so much of the word of God to the point that the mind receives it. The mind has got to receive the word. Let me say it again. You got to immerse your mind to the point where the mind believes the word more than it believes the flesh. Your mind has got to believe the word more than your mind believes the flesh. See, if you don't feed your mind enough word, all your mind is thinking about is how you feel, what you feel, or am I gonna be healed? I'm getting sicker. All your mind is thinking about is what, what it's looking at. We walk by faith, not by sight. When you don't feed your faith, all you're going by is sight. If your sight is pain and suffering and worry and stress, that's all you'll feel. But when you're feeding what's not visible, look not things are seen, but things are unseen. When you keep feeding the spirit every day, flood the spirit, listen it all night, listen to it all day, say it all day, speak it all night. As man thinks so he is, life death, power of the tongue. As you think and speak, think and speak healing, think and speak change. Think and speak whatever it is you're trying to change your life. You got to live it. In order to change it, you got to live that new way, that new thinking, that new way of living in order to change what you're trying to change during this fasting period. And that's why those scriptures are so important. If you're thinking about healing all day long, you're flooding your, flooding your mind. And it's what's coming out your mouth. Prayer is a healing. Scripture is a healing. What do you think about? Healing. What are you speaking? Healing. I'm thinking about healing. I'm speaking healing. I'm praising healing. I'm praying God to healing. See, Thinking and speaking have to be on the same page, especially when you're trying to change something in your life. Not just not just disease. If you're trying to change something in your life, your thoughts and your confessions out of your mouth must be on the same page, and you got to live them every day because you're trying to change something in the flesh. And there's a prayer, mind, and, and, and discipline have to work together, and you do it every day, every day, every day, every day. In order, and then and in due season. And in due season, in God's time, whenever that change comes, it's going to come. But what we're doing until it comes is feeding the spirit, flooding the spirit, and speaking the spirit, speaking victory, thinking about victory, speaking healing, thinking about healing, not worry, keep the worry out, keep fear out, keep the anxiety out, keep all the things not of, not of God out of your mind. And the only way to keep that out of your mind is by flooding the spirit and speaking the word of God every single time negativity comes into your mind to try to keep you from going that direction. Amen. And that's how you how you keep yourself encouraged in the Lord. Like David encouraged himself in the Lord. And like Caleb said earlier, a uh, Joseph, a uh, Joseph, regardless of how his brothers treated him, Joseph Joseph went and became a leader in Egypt. And, and his, his brothers were so jealous of him, they want to sell him to slavery. They thought that was over. Next thing you know, Joseph was was raised up because 
he he stayed true to who he was and what he believed and who he was as a person so humility and steadfastness will get get you through the hard times you're going through and that's why we keep ourselves immersed in the word of god man shall not live by bread alone and where it proceeds out of the mouth of god matthew 4 4 keep speaking the word keep praising keep worshiping keep flooding your spirit and your mind with things of god especially during this 30 day period amen amen uh one of my favorite one of my favorite examples of the faith step is ezekiel the valley of the bones turn to ezekiel 37 turn to ezekiel 37 this is one of my favorite bible accounts which is which is what do we think and what do we believe now what do we think is affected by the world what do we believe is affected by god see sometimes what we think we look at things in the world the, the world is affecting our belief if you look too much at the world it's going to affect your belief but if you keep looking at god your belief is going to be getting stronger amen now let's look it up <clears throat> we're going to start verse thir uh, one e ezekiel 37 verse one and i'm going to go through one through ten the the hand of god was upon me and he brought me out by spirit of the lord and set me down in the middle of the valley it was full of bones he caused me to pass among them round about and behold there were very many on the surface of the valley and lo they were very dry he said to me son of man can these bones live and i answered oh lord god you know now stop right there stop right there now this is a very interesting trick question verse four i mean verse three now in his vision he's in the valley of the bones and god asked now god asked him can these bones live no really god is asking him do you really believe do you really believe my power and 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 ezekiel was really ezekiel was really slick he said oh god you know now he could have said i'm not sure uh yes lord he said oh god you know now i don't know he, that was a very safe way to answer that question because ezekiel knew if god is asking can these bones live and and he said he's basically saying where's your faith amen verse four again he said to me now 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 he's going to test he's going to test uh ezekiel's faith again he said to me prophesy over these bones and say to them Old dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. Now stop right there. In verse 3, in verse 3, the Lord asked him, can these bones live? And he said, oh God, you know. Now, by, by saying, oh God, you know, God's assuming that you believe. Now, then right after he said that, then God put him to the test. Let me see if you really believe. Prophesy over these bones. Because if you really believe, you will not doubt what I just gave you to do. Now, so he prophesied over the bones. Verse 7. So, as I, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may come to life. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they came to life and stood on their feet, exceedingly great army. Now, stop there. What's going on here is his, his faith is being tested in a vision. Because remember, sometimes, sometimes we will have a vision, a, a vision dream of God showing us in victory. 
and we wake up and wonder if it's going to be real. Let me say that again. Sometimes God gives us a vision dream of a victory in our life. And then we actually wake up and say, can that really happen? Now, wait a minute. If God just gave you the vision dream, why do we wake up and say, can that really happen? Because that's the flesh talking. The flesh has no faith. So when God gives us a vision dream, and some of you may have already witnessed this, sometimes you have a dream about whatever goal you're working on, and you see yourself in the dream accomplishing the goal. Now, that's God empowering you to become whatever your dream is sharing with you. But then you wake up and say, can that really happen? Now, what do you just did? God just gave you a dream of victory, and you wake up and say, can that really happen? If, if God has given you the vision dream, you must believe you have received it. You must believe when you pray, believe you have received it. If you pray, you believe you received it. And then you have a dream about what you just prayed for. And God's trying to empower your faith so you can hold on to your dream to bring it to life. Don't wake up saying, can that really happen? Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. Now, let's continue. Continue. Down in verse, uh, down in verse 13. They jump down, same, same chapter, 37, 13. Ezekiel. Now, that was a vision I just read. One through ten is the vision. Now, in verse, uh, let's see. Go down to. Uh, let's start verse twelve. Verse twelve. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, "Thus says the Lord: Behold, I'll open the graves, cause uh, cause you to come up out of the graves, my people. I will bring you into a land of Israel." Now, what's happening here? The, the vision that we read in 1 through 10, when Ezekiel is now explaining his vision, he's trying to show the power of God, how, how we cannot limit God. So that's why he's saying, can these bones live? If they're just skeletons, can they live? And if God can part the Red Sea, if God can, can bring water from a rock, if God can create man from dust, if God can create a woman from a rib, why are we saying, can God put could flesh on these bones so you see the, the purpose of this chapter is to show how sometimes our limited mind can counter what the word says can be done by god our limited mind many times tries to counter what the word says can be done by the word of god so see that's what we have to feed our mind uh, as a man thinks so he is and speak the right things of god because our mind is so ready to not believe and we must feed our faith by what? Starving it out. And the way you feed your faith is the more words you read, the more you study. S feed your faith, starve it out. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. You got to feed your spirit and feed your faith daily. Not just every Sunday. Feed your spirit, feed your faith daily because the, the flesh is working against that. And that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important to keep ourselves immersed in things of God because that's the only way we can keep keep the flesh under submission to the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish during our fasting is fasting and praying especially now this applies not just fasting and praying this applies also to whatever goal you have in life because our goals and dreams are done the same way we got to keep our eyes and minds stayed on him that we can do all things to Christ whatever goal you have whatever goal you're working on I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me because you have you have you have negative friends friends who are jealous that you got a goal they'll come and tell you you can't you can you can't do that you have friends you that's why we have to be careful that's why we have to be careful who we share our dreams with some people will get jealous just because you have a dream some people get jealous because your dream is bigger than theirs and instead of supporting you they'll speak against you and now you got venom against what you're trying to trying to achieve we have to be accountable for keeping people who are naysayers who are venom into our dreams we have to make sure that we keep that we have to keep that under control and keep people out of our mindset that can be venomous to what we're trying to hear see we we're in control of that we cannot make people shut up, but we can make sure we avoid people who will speak venom into our life. We have to control that because sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes the people speaking negativity are family members. Sometimes they're coworkers. Sometimes they're church members. It doesn't matter. We are in control 
of keeping the naysayers out of our ear. Because when you're trying to accomplish something, when you're trying to pray your way through something, you got to make sure you protect your ear gate, your eye gate, your belief gate. See, if people are around you who do not believe in what you're doing, you got to get away from that. You got to get away from that because the naysayers, the naysayers, the naysayers can kill your dream. The naysayers can kill your motivation. The naysayers can kill your joy. They can kill, steal, destroy everything in your life. The naysayers are coming from the devil, matter of fact. They're speaking for the devil. They're coming from the devil. They're trying to steal your joy, your goal, your peace, your happiness, everything you're trying to accomplish in this world. And that's why we have to keep speaking and thinking the things of God as a man thinks who he is. Life, dead, power, of the tongue. I just did. Thank you, Dana. I just turned on. Thank you. So that's why we got to keep making sure we're feeding the spirit every day, every day, because the flesh is working against the spirit. We got to remember that. See, we read it, but we got to remember it because for those of us who are trying to are trying to pray through something, we got to remember this especially because anytime you don't pray, the flesh is going to rise up and tell you it can't be done. So we're shutting the devil's mouth every single day. We praise through the pain. Every day you praise through, uh, through whatever you, challenges you're going through, you're slapping the devil every time because the devil wants us to give up give up on healing, give up on faith, give up on joy, give up on victory. He wants us to give up on everything in our life. But we keep on feeding the faith, keep on starving that doubt, keep on feeding the spirit, starve that flesh. That's the key to surviving, just surviving, because our mind is under attack 24-7. So we got to protect that attack 24-7 by keeping ourselves immersed in things of God. Whatever it is, if it's of God, Keep feeding, keep feeding yourself things of God, scriptures, word, music, prayers, fellowship, whatever it is. Keep feeding the spirit. Keep feeding the spirit because that's what, that is the key to victory over it. Because this, see my, doesn't matter, as I said this before. <laughs> yes. It doesn't, but see, this is what the devil can, this is what the devil can't stand. It doesn't matter how hard he hits our body because guess what? Our spirit is still perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Doesn't matter how we feel. Doesn't matter how bad we feel physically. The devil can't touch our spirit because our spirit is still in spiritual perfection. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So it doesn't matter if you're in pain. Your spirit doesn't feel a thing. It doesn't matter what you're going through in life because your spirit doesn't feel a thing. So devil, in your face, devil, you're trying to make me think. My spiritual condition is the same condition as my body. My body may be in pain, but my spirit is in perfection. But you, my body may be racked with pain. I may be feel like I'm falling apart. I mean, I might feel I might feel like I'm giving up. But guess what? If I'm still praising, I'm still shouting, I'm still dancing. Praise God. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're going through. And that's why we say in your face moment, devil, in your face moment, you want us to give up. You want us to give up to pain. You want us to give up on life. You want to give up and go. But guess what? We keep praising. We keep praising. It doesn't matter because you know what? When due season, <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. In due season, we will reap if we faint not. We will reap if we faint not. Galatians 6, 9. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. And the way you keep not fainting is keep on praising. Keep on worshiping. Keep on praising your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're going through. It doesn't matter how hard it is. It doesn't matter how dark it is. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what the attack is. It doesn't matter what it is because we still got the victory. That's what the devil doesn't understand. It doesn't matter what he hits us with. We still walking in victory because in the end, we're still with the Lord because we know where we're going. We got our salvation intact so yeah hit this body hit this flesh yeah guess what i'm still gonna be with the lord yeah i feel pain guess what i'm still gonna be with the lord i'm still gonna be praising yeah knock me down off my feet guess what i'm still gonna be praising yeah it doesn't matter you can't shut my mouth devil you have no kind of hold on me and that's what we're singing i'm blessed the devil has no kind of hold on me unless we give it to him i don't know i don't know about you i ain't about to give the devil nothing so i don't know i don't care how much pain i'm in the devil can't steal my praise and that's why i get ready to close the devil can't steal your praise unless you let him. The devil can't make you do anything. The devil can't steal your praise because you're, oh, yes, like, that's right, that's right, we sing it all the time, Reverend Lisa. I see you in the future. 
and you look much better than you look right now. I see you in the future, and you look much better than you look right now. I see me in the future, and I look much better than I look right now. See yourself. Come on. Every day. Every day. See yourself in the future. See yourself. And then that's why we say it. That's why we in every day. You got to see it. See it. Spend time. We we got to commit. We got to commit to this. We got to commit to see yourself in the future. If you don't see yourself in the future, you look at it now. You don't look at it now. I see where I'm going. I know where I am now. I look at all the chaos. I look at all the pain. I look at so no, no, I'm not looking at it now. I always see now. I'm looking at the future, where I'm going, where God is taking me. God's taking us to healing. God's taking us to victory. God's taking the breakthrough, deliverance, whatever it is. I see you in the future, and you look much better than you look right now. I see me in the future. I look much better. I see the fellowship in the future, and we look much better than we look right now. So we got to keep that mindset. We got to keep that mindset. Don't look at now. Look at where you're going. Don't look at sickness. Look at your vic look at your healing. Don't look at the challenge. Look at the victory. Don't look at the battle. Look at the battle being won. So we're looking at what we're going to accomplish over this world. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Is there anything too hard for God? You see, that's why. That's why we hold on to his promises. That's why. We never let go of God's unchanging hand because we hold on to his promises. Amen. We hold on. Hold on. Because, see, <laughs> even right now, even when we get to day 30, and I get ready to close, even when we get to day 30 of this fast, you will be better than you were January 1st. You know what I said? If you're staying true to this fast by January 30th, you already will be better than you look back then. On January 1st. Because January 1st, you have some things you want to put on your list. By the time we get to January 31st, we're going to be much better than we were back. It's already done. It's already started. This happens daily. Every day you get better, you look much better than you looked back then. <laughs> I look much better than I looked back then, January 1st. Because this January, we don't, we're on day 8. We're already on day 8. So we must, we're already much better than we were back then because we're eight days into the Lord, eight days more in the more praising, eight days more in the more worship, eight days more in the living for the Lord more, eight days. Now. So when we get day 16, what happened? I look much better than I look back then. Then we day 16, you better than day eight. Day 31, you better than you look at day 16. So it's a, it's an ongoing process. It's happening day by day, but you got to know that. You got to know that each day you keep stepping. Each day you're moving. The devil can't stop you. The devil can't stop you from taking a step because one step at a time, you're getting much better than you look right now. You're getting much better. One step at a time. Don't look at the whole picture. One step at a time. You get overwhelmed. If you see, man, I got 30 days. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about 30 days. Let's just, let's just get through day eight. And then when day nine comes, let's just get through day nine. Don't try to worry about the rest of the month. Worry about one day at a time. One day at a time. Like the word says, let tomorrow take care of itself. Today has enough to worry about. So let's just think about all we need to do to walk in victory on day eight. And when tomorrow comes, now tomorrow is going to be the day. And then we'll worry about tomorrow. See, let tomorrow stay in tomorrow. And as it comes into today, the present, then we deal with it. Otherwise, you're going to overwhelm, trying to figure out how am I going to do this? Oh man, I got, I mean, this, oh, I got two thirds left. I mean, I'm only one third. Man, I, I got twenty some days left. No, no, no. How many days have you got? Eight days down. See, the water is the the glass is getting full, not empty. See, so so our glass is getting full because now we're day eight, day nine, day nine. And we'll see, I see myself in the future. I see that glass full, not empty. I see the glass getting full. Each day I walk in the Lord, I'm getting stronger. Each day I walk in the Lord, I'm praising more. Each day I walk in the Lord, I'm getting closer to the Lord. Each day I walk in the Lord, I'm getting more blessings. Each day I walk in the Lord, I have more and more power in the name of Jesus. So that's what you got to focus on. Each day we keep feeding our faith, starving the doubt. Each day, as a man thinks who is, and each day, life did the power, power of the tongue, and those who love it must eat of its fruit. That's what we got to meditate on the entire fasting and praying period. To keep our mind and our words on the same page. To speak victory. To think victory. Speak victory. Think victory. See it. Think it. 
speak it, believe it, just live it. Live the victory that you're going to achieve by seeing it until you believe it. Believe it, receive it to your heart, receive it to your heart. And now start expecting, well, I can't wait to day 31. Oh, I can't wait to January 30th. I see it 30. I see my accomplished goal January 30th. I see what I'm going to be. See, see yourself already at day 31st. See it in victory. See the 31st of this month as your victory. But don't worry about how you're going to get there. Just know on day 30, uh, January 31st, we're going to be celebrating and shouting for the victory we know coming forth. Amen. <laughs> Amen, glorious. Amen. Come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we know, we know who we are in Christ. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus. And we know who we are in Christ. And is there anything too hard for God? And that's what I want to leave you with today as we as we successfully go through day eight and keep on walking this thing together. We're all in this together. We're praising together. We're fasting together. We're worshiping together. And we're supporting one another. And any challenges you want to face, be sure to state them, state them under the video. Or I, I answer. I try to answer every response that you guys leave under the video and archives. So I, I, if you have any other questions or I want to share testimonies, any testimonies that you want to share about challenges you're facing or victories that you're noticing, uh, share that. Share that any any revelations that are coming up during your fasting period, post that because people I want I want to I want people to see that you're getting stronger here or there or you overcome a challenge here or there already in day eight. See, when you posting your your victories, posting your challenges, it allows us to share with each other in in archives what the challenges we're facing. And I'll always I'll always respond uh, to your comments. So post that because. That allows others to say, "Well, you know what? I feel the same way." Oh, praise God! We—that's the way we support each other. When you leave comments in the archive, that allows us to talk to each other. Amen. Praise God! That—that's—that's that's how we empower each other. Even if you don't leave a comment, when you, Amen, uh, uh, Lord, uh, Lois, Even if you leave a, a loyalty, even if you leave a comment or a thumbs up or just to praise God, that lets us know we're supporting each other in what we're trying to do to get through that thing we're trying to get over in our life. Because we've got we, we, OG1s, OG2s, OG3s now, we're in the third year. All of us are together. We're all together in this. So as we come together in fellowship, we're supporting each other how to stay strong. Amen, Brother Carl. Welcome, Brother Carl. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is always right. The Holy Spirit is always right, as we always talk about, Brother Carl. And, and that the Holy Spirit is always going to help us get to our goal based on what we need to do. And when we let, wait for the Holy Spirit to always guide us how to make it from day to day, it's always going to be right on time. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for another great day to come together as we fasting on day eight, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord, for blessing the fellowship right now as we've committed to this consecration fast throughout the month of January to get a closer walk with you, Lord to get a closer walk with you, to, to immerse ourselves in your presence, to rest in you, to trust you, to walk by faith, not by sight, Lord. Touch every fellowship member who's working, who's going through this fasting period, Lord, to give us supernatural strength, supernatural focus, Lord, to be able to walk through this season, to be a closer walk with you. Because we know without faith, it is impossible to please you and those who come to you must believe that you are. And Lord, we believe that you are. We believe that you're with us every step of the way. Because we trust you, Lord. We're being obedient to your word. We are being obedient to your promises. To keep our mind stayed on you. Because we trust you, Lord. And touch every fellowship member, Lord. We thank you right now in advance. For the victory over every fellowship member's life. As we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. And right now, before we go, I can always, I can never leave because someone's always watching at some point who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So please, please no typing as I do the closing prayer. Someone's been watching this entire lesson but who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They're watching, but just crying the whole time. You, you're watching the lesson 
but you feel like the world is caving in on you. You feel like there's no way out. You feel like giving up on life itself. And yet somehow you find yourself on this channel and have no idea how you got here. You may be walking as a backslider in guilt. And, and for whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into the world of sin. And now the devil is knocking you every which way but loose and telling you, you can never go back to God because once you fail God, you can never go back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. All have fallen short. None, no one is perfect. So if you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you've been walking in heaviness and depression or walking as a backslider in guilt, and you want to come back to the Lord, both of you pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you, in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is now right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also to convict us, to let us know when we're not in God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you the people, the activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing all the darkness into your life. Find new friends who love the Lord and can teach you how to live in this world, loving the Lord and not loving the things in this world, which brings in all the darkness. Every day, every day, feed your faith, starve your doubt. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh every day. And the more you do it, the more time you spend with God every day, soon you'll feel the peace of God we're talking about come over you to let you know it's going to be all right. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, and retaliation, and backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named the unnamed, seen the unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of the participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of, out of our thoughts, out of our flesh, out of our spirit, out of our family, out of our home, all back to the pit of hell from which you came, in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose in the fellowship, loose unspeakable joy, Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration. Restore. Restore every area of our life. Restore our zest for living. Restore our joy. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Heal marriages and families right now, Lord, who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. Bring joy back, forgiveness back, communication back into those families and marriages. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil still attacks every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, emotional healing, physical healing. By your stripes, we're healed, we're healed, we're healed. And we speak it every day, Lord. I believe I've received my healing in Jesus' name. I believe I've received my healing. In Jesus' name, we speak it every day, live it every day, breathe it every day until it manifests in your life. Loose, supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance, blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship right now for every financial need, whatever it is, large or small. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory for Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want for anything, for the Lord is my shepherd. For we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the lender and not the borrower. We are blessings flowing in, blessings flowing out. We are blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt, all of our needs are met. 
we are pretty more to put in store. We are children of God, and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for our miracle, Lord. We thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle they've been praying for for so long. And we now learn, Lord, to take time to see our miracle every day, spend time with our miracle every day, see it, believe it, receive it in your heart. And once you receive it in your heart, start expecting your miracle every day, expect it every day. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means that any day, any day we wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for for so long. So Lord, all these things we ask, all these things we ask. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen.